Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about how to count combinations of on-off switches by systematic listing with a tree diagram. Systematic listing is just a method of counting by systematically listing out all the possibilities. This is an example from my math lab. It says Pamela's computer printer allows for optional settings with a panel of four on-off switches in a row. How many different settings can she select if there are no restrictions on the switches? Starting with the first switch, we have two possibilities. Either the switch is on or the switch is off. When the first switch is on, the second switch can be on or off. When the first switch is off, the second switch can be on or off. But the same thing goes for the third switch. If the first and second switches are on, the third switch can be on or off. If the first and second switches are on and off respectively, still the third switch can be on or off. In fact, no matter how the first and second switch turned out, the third switch can be either on or off. It doubles the number of possibilities we had when we finished with the second switch. And the same thing for the fourth. Regardless of what's happening with the first, second, and third switches, the fourth switch can be either on or off. What I've just constructed is called a tree diagram, and a lot of times students have trouble reading tree diagrams. What you wanna do is recognize that the ends of each of these branches represents one scenario. Notice that we ended up with 16 possibilities under the category of fourth switch. Let's look at the first one on. Reading the tree diagram backwards to the beginning, we see that first for the fourth switch, we had an on switch. Then the third switch was on, the second switch was on, and the first switch was on. So this first branch of our tree diagram represents the scenario when all of the switches are on. Going to the second result of the fourth switch where we have an off and reading backwards along the tree diagram, we see that this branch represents the scenario that the fourth switch is off, but all the rest are on. The next branch has a fourth switch that's on. Reading backwards, we see the third switch is off, but the first two are on. The fourth scenario, the fourth switch is off, the third switch is off, but the first and second are on. In the fifth scenario, the fourth switch is on, the third switch is on, the second switch is off, and the first switch is on. In the sixth scenario, we have off, on, off, on, reading backwards. And we can continue in this way, reading each of the branches from the end to the beginning. The only reason I recommend reading from the end to the beginning is because people find it easier to track the branches that way. So what we have here is a complete list of all 16 of the unique possible scenarios. So there are 16 ways or 16 different settings that we can end up with. This pattern might look familiar to you if you've already completed a chapter of Math for Liberal Arts on logic. It compares directly to the rows in a truth table for a statement with four components. You see how the tree diagram looks exactly the same? These four columns on the right would be your truth table. And if you recall, when you have four components, you had two to the fourth or 16 possible rows, possible truth scenarios. So sometimes it's helpful when you're trying to process new information to refer back to something you already understood. Now, why did we get two to the fourth possibilities? Because there were two possibilities for the first switch. And then for each one of those possibilities, we had two possibilities for the second. So we double that number, two times two is four. And then for the third switch, we double again, times two is eight. And for the fourth switch, times two is 16. So each one of the switches represents a doubling of the number of possible outcomes we get two to the fourth is 16. Let's look at a similar exercise where we could use this same tree diagram. It says Pamela's computer printer allows for optional settings with a panel of four on off switches in a row. How many different settings can she select if at least one switch must be off? Now my tree diagram represented the situation where there were no restrictions whatsoever. But the reason that I'm going to use the same tree diagram is that I can remove anything that I don't want. Keep in mind that at least one off means that not all of them are on. So all we have to do is cross off the scenario where all of them are on and everything left has at least one off. Since there were 16 total, 16 minus one is 15 ways where we can have at least one switch be off. 
Check out the next video where we talk about counting on off switches the easy way by using the fundamental counting principle. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.